Good afternoon, guys. I am audible. Good afternoon. Yes, sir, you are audible. Yes, sir, you are audible. So, guys, uh, I also uploaded the code because some of them are requesting for uh, the console version. It means whatever I have written in the console, some of them are requesting. So, I uploaded the entire code, right? So, you that is in the today.txt file, right? So, the console plus the greet app I have uploaded. So, uh, we are moving to the next things. So prior to moving to the next things, guys, do you have any doubt in the greet app? In this, any doubt is pending. I hope everyone is able to run this code in the machine. Because ultimately, when you yeah. run it by yourself, then you learn. Right? Somebody uh, is also pinging on my on the chat uh, that uh, the the content. I mean, the whatever I am saying, it must be in. Hindi plus English, but I think there are some guys who only understand the English. Uh, that's why I'm entirely speaking the English, right? Otherwise, they don't understand the things. So, guys, uh, now we are moving uh, to something. I mean, we are going to use uh, somehow the things uh, how to clear this code. I mean, that there are some 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 issues in the code. Uh, what sort of issues I want to highlight? The first issue we are facing that is we are writing on click, say welcome. So the point is on click, say welcome is we are actually mixing the JavaScript code in HTML. That is an issue. So that's why I want to omit this. So what I what I am doing, I'm just commenting out this thing just for your reference. What we did earlier. Now I just want to do the same stuff button into two. But here it would be, let's say, greet. But I am not write on click, right? Even I am not going to write uh, on click for the clear, right? So I have two buttons, and in between we are putting the space by using NBSV. Now the point is, we have two buttons, and we do not provide on click because we don't want to pollute the code. That's why uh, we don't use on click here. Now the point is, the the main important point raises how this on click will be happen now we we are going to learn how to bind the events how to bind the events because we want to bind the event on the runtime because here we write we bind the event on the html time it means this button is fixed and the event is fixed but we want to do the same stuff with the with the coding so we just move to the logic logic.js and uh, i want to do this this stuff document document dot and I am writing document document dot get element by ID. I'm using this word get element by ID and get element by ID. I need to specify some ID here, right? So I'm saying this one, let's say is a B1 button. So I, I provide a B1 ID for this button and B2 ID for this button. Makes sense. So I have two IDs now. And I want to attach an event on this ID. So first of all, I, I am fetching document dot get element by ID and I, I specify B1, right? So this is a one way to access it because in earlier session, somebody asked to use a query selector because I that moment I'm, I'm saying uh, because we just started. That's why we use get element by IDs kind of stuff or get element by tag name. Now we because we know this this thing. So we have another option to use it. That is document dot query selector so there are two methods they have introduced in ecma 6 ecma 6 is, is introduced in 2015 and most of the browser i, I mean i think 95 percent of browser understand ecma 6 so if you just go here document dot query selector and if you type hash and then you specify here uh, the id so when whenever you want to access the id you need to specify hash and with and you need to specify the id so what is the id id is b1 Right, so I'm access. I am specifying ID B1. Right, so it is quite similar, like line number three. But the query selector is, is highly recommended to those people who, who who are actually using CSS because those who are familiar with the CSS they know hash. Those who are not familiar with the CSS they need to remember hash means ID. So whenever I write hash B1, it means I am accessing ID. If it is a class, if it is a predefined class for a CSS, so I need to specify dot. Right. 
So that's a syntax part. So hash b1, I'm specifying here, and here I specify add event listener. So it means I'm attaching an event and I'm attaching an event called click. So it means I am saying on button one, I, I mean the B1 that is an ID. On this ID, I am going to attach add event listener click. So it means when I do click, just call my function. What is my function? My function is say welcome, right? So I'm just passing the function. That's the important thing, guys. I am passing a function. So say welcome is nothing. It's a function which is I am passing. I'm not calling it. So it is same like yesterday we done add function and TN10 is a function which we pass it. We are not call it right. Same here. We just pass it. So it means we are saying whenever the click is happened, then call say welcome, right? So this is this line number two is actually what I did. I did event binding. I did event binding. I hope guys, this is clear to everyone how to bind an event. So if if we are going to run this stuff, if I'm going to run this stuff, we will see what sort of problem we are facing. So I just go here and I just want to show you so I just go on a console section and I do refresh of this. This is the error that is coming. Right. This is the error which is coming. So it is saying cannot read property add even listener of null. A any any idea guys why this thing is coming up? What does it mean? Cannot read property add even listener of null. Any idea? Because we initially is having null value. Because what we have? Initially, we are having null value. That's why. Why initially we have the value. The function you passed, sky was not defined. Okay. The point is, the point is, if we just understand the thing, because this is related to this line, line number twelve. If you know line number twelve, because HTML is, is it interpreted when HTML is running HTML is interpreted line by line. This thing you need to remember. So this line work, this line work, this line work, this line work, this line work. Same, same, same. This, 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 this. Then it will reach to this line. When it reaches to this line, it is actually jumping to logic.js. Remember this thing. It is jumped to where? It is jumped to logic.js. So it is now here. It is reached to this, right? So it jumped to this particular point. So we are here in this logic.js. And in this logic.js, it execute this line. When it is executing this line, document.query is selected. So it is asking for B1. It is asking for a B1, right? So when it is asking for a B1, and if we see here, because we are on the line number 12, so that B1 is not created yet. Make sense? So this is the point you need to remember. HTML is interpreted line by line. And because it is interpreted line by line, so this line will be executed first. And because logic.js is there, so logic.js line is get executed, right? And this is get executed, so it is asking for the B1. B1 is not there, so that's why it is saying B1 is null, right? So you cannot attach on null. Make sense? I hope, guys, this is clear why this thing has happened. So now we talk about what developer will do in this case, right? Single is saying sound is not clear. Is it? The voice is clear or not? It's clear, sir. It's clear, sir. Is it clear? Okay. Single, you need to check on your end because everyone is saying the voice is clear. All right. So moving back, guys. Uh, we have the thing called uh, now the point is the logic.js is there so immediate immediately developers will do they just cut down this thing they just cut cut down this thing and they just put it here they just put it here right so it means they want execute this script but later on not immediately right so I, I hope uh, this this thing is clear. This logic.js we put it here, so it means this will be executed later on. Uh, meanwhile, the button is get created. So if we refresh it, no error is coming. Right. So this is what the developers is, they they have done. This is a jugad of coding, right? So we are not going to use this stuff. We are actually putting it here. We want to put it here, and we want the same behavior, right? So uh, Prabhu is asking about 
event binding event binding is simple because earlier we are using this on click so we are binding the event i mean we are saying on click call say welcome right we don't want to do the same stuff we don't want to do the same stuff on html side we want to do the same stuff on our js side that's why we are using document dot query selector so we are fetching the b1 b1 is an id that is a button id on the button we are attaching an event that's why there is a thing called add event listener and we are saying when you click it call say welcome so you need to remember there is no on click there is only click right but here in html side we need to write on click attribute right so that's that's an attribute on click we need to write on html side but in the logic.js side we are binding an event but through a coding right so the best part is now your code is much cleaner because it does not have this say welcome call this say welcome call is dependent on this logic.js i hope this is clear so we are binding an event b i mean we are binding a click with b1 through a code now the point is when we run this script tag which is in which is on the head tag so it will be executed before the loading of the body because html is interpreted so if html is interpreted this line will be executed first that is a problem so what we will do we will use so many things we have an option so we have an option of let's say defer so if you use defer word here so what will happen we will see if i have used a defer word right now i am refreshing it no problem is coming so defer word whenever you use with a script so you are saying script once you read it from the line number 12 just wait you launch your script after when you load the body right so defer means you are making your script lazy you are saying load the script once the html is loaded so we will give a preference to the html and uh, make your script lazy right if you not use defer so the script is become eager it means whenever we reach on the 12 line number it will keep executing the script makes sense so there is a important word that is called defer makes sense guys so we can if if you want to run your script in a lazy manner you use a defer word for this so that's the first choice so i just commented out for your reference so i just copy this thing so for remember this word lazy loading of a script is through this defer so lazy loading means when you do this lazy stuff so you are saying my script will be run after loading of the html right so i just comment this thing i just go here now now the now the point is uh shweta is asking can you explain b1 and b2 shweta it is not new thing like in input you specify id f name so you specify id because you want to recognize this is a input box and you want to access it by through a f name same stuff i do it for the button so i specify id b1 and id b2 right and through id b1 and id b2 you are able to access the buttons right so in my code i am accessing document dot get element by id or either i use document dot query selector make sense so Deepam is asking query selector. Query selector is a newer one. I told you ECMA six introduced query selector, and query selector is very very easiest thing because if you are coming from a CSS background, then it is easy. That's why I not use query selector on an initial stage. So they have their own style to access the elements. So when we use hash b one, so it means we are going to access by ID, right? So we do not need to remember get element by ID. So if I want to access this by class, so I will specify dot b one. So it means I am accessing by a class, right? So this is the benefit. So instead of remembering so many methods, I can use a one method. Get, I mean, I use query selector instead of using get element by ID, get element by name, get element by tag, get element by uh, class. Instead of remembering so many methods, I remember only one single method, query selector. But the point is, you you must know dot means class, hash means ID. Even there are so many attributes, right? I hope you understand, Deepam. What is the difference between query selector and get element by ID? Right. Uh, defer. Defer means I told you. Defer is basically you use when you want to execute script lazy, right? Because I, I told you when when you are running your HTML stuff, it is it is actually executing line by line. It is executing line by line, right? So when it is executing line by line, so the point to be remember is this line executed first. When this line is executed first. It 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 does not have this button, right? If it does not have this button, so it does not have this B1. So if the B1 and B2 is not there, so it will generate an error. 
that's why we put this script at the end right either we have a choice to put this script at the end or otherwise i have the choice to la lazy load the script so that's why i use a defer word so when i use a defer word so i am saying do not immediately execute the script just wait for loading the html first so html will be load first then the script will be load so it means defer is for lazy loading make sense so i i hope you this this thing is clear why uh, the defer is uses is on click not recommended as per any standard if the on click is is not not by the any standard it is by the coding things it means when you when you are following the srp kind of principle you are saying my html is just mean for skeleton thing and my js is for the coding thing that's a that is a standard for a handling the large period site so if you want to handle the large period then you want to uh, drive it i mean you you need to just isolate the things i want the html will do the skeleton stuff i don't want to mix the javascript code so uh, even that's a first first reason and another reason is if if you want to attach dynamically event dynamically event means for example if you just go to the flipkart and search for some product for example you search for mobiles there are plenty of mobiles are coming and plenty of add to cart button is coming so it means add to cart button is created dynamically and events are attached dynamically so how you will attach if you learn this thing so you are able to attach it makes sense so you are not creating 10 add to cart buttons or 20 add to cart buttons because add to cart is coming from the back end because if 20 products are coming from the flipkart 20 add to cart will be created right so 20 i mean 20 items is created 20 add to cart is created so the point to be remember is i want to create a button dynamically i want to create a i want to attach an event dynamically so add event listener is for this so it will help you on both of the cases segregation of code plus dynamic things i hope sandeep i answer your question now nitin is asking if you put script after body then it is equivalent to defer it somehow right somehow because anyhow it is after the body tag so it means your html body is get loaded and then uh, your script tag is working but the place for the script tag is always on the head that's why i i use the same convention that's why i use a defer word so, so some of the developer who don't know there is defer thing they just place copy paste the script tag at the bottom right i hope nitin this thing is clear Deepam is asking: Is there any performance difference between two? Yes. Deepam is asking: Is there any performance difference between two? I I mean, you are asking without defer. So without defer is always preferred because uh, if you use not you are not using defer, so your script is loaded initial stage. But if if your script is so the point is to be remember is if your script is entirely dependent on dependent on the HTML and some HTML component is get loaded, then the script will be run. Then you have a choice for defer. Makes sense. Akansh is asking defer is basically used for binding. No defer is basically used to lazy load your script, right? So if you want to lazy load your script, it means after the HTML stuff you want to load the script, then you use defer. So the primary thing is you need to remember is defer is essential, absolutely essential, when your script is entirely dependent on some HTML things. So first load the HTML, then load the JavaScript. This is requirement, then put the defer. That is the only logic. Ch Chetan is asking, what is the benefit of using defer? I told you, lazy loading, right? so because the js file can be loaded before body closes because the js file can be loaded before the body closes no so i told you on a head tag your uh, js file will be loaded right because it is loaded and if you, if you just check it out that's why this uh, document query sector is giving an error so if if you if you just try this thing console dot, instead of console dot log if i try alert alert is for showing a pop up so if i'm showing hello i load first right i load first i write this thing makes sense so if if i i just do one thing i just copy this thing close this stuff and i just simply paste this stuff you will see the output hello i load first right but it is it is actually cached somehow it is actually cached somehow or i think uh i have the defer i just omit the defer right then it it will make some sense so i do okay okay and i just copy this stuff close it down go here paste it 
you will see hello i load first so you do not have html page right so it means html is not loaded this is without defer guys i hope chetan you understand the js load first because it is on the head tag right so defer when you use a defer it means your html load first then your js loads that's why js has become lazy so if i instead of using this so now the now the html will come now if i undo this thing and i put defer and now i just copy this stuff close this run this html comes first then alert comes next make sense that is the difference deepam there is no performance difference between get element by id and query selector right it, it is just an upgradation version the query selector is basically used to shorthand your code right lakshya I, i think you understand this thing because i already uh, show in an output uh satish how to remove these these warning this is the dev tools warning it is because of some ex extension so, so just copy this thing and paste it on google it will recommend you which extension you have jatin is asking can we use defer for multiple js of course okay i'm showing the javascript code abhishek is showing something so abhishek is showing window dot on load we will see so for defer it is showing unexpected delimiter why so i think uh, shita uh, you use the defer spelling right right way or not otherwise it would not say this thing you need to put it on this script tag right so please check the syntax probably in a syntax Uh, you are writing something else so it is, is it in the warning it is coming or it is, is it the error you are facing can you can you just sh share your screenshot alert thing is diksha basically somebody says this defer is uh, is basically Uh, for just give the understanding if you use a defer so it means your html loaded first and then your js loaded next that's why i put alert on top of it when i put alert on top of it so it means html output will become first then alert so alert is just a pop up if alert is a pop up so it it, it simply means if alert is a pop up, so it's it simply means it will it will hold the screen i mean if the alert is there you cannot you first need to do the okay and then you will on a previous screen so if i use a defer here in index.html if i use a defer here so it simply means your uh, javascript will load after the body right your javascript will load after the body section so you will see with an output if i just copy this url so just see the program output if i copy this url and i paste it you will see first the html will come then this pop up will become make sense so this is the use of this alert that's there is the answer of prapti uh, why i use this alert alerts is basically just to show you the sample that html loaded first then the alert will come otherwise you cannot trap this thing how the defer is working right so if you if you just remove the defer if you remove the defer so it, it simply says if you see the output alert comes first and after this alert okay you will able to see this is coming right so because of alert you are able to learn how this thing is work working but if i use console because console would would not hold the screen alert will stop the screen it says first you click on okay then i will show next the thing that that's why that's why i use alert right okay now i moving back to i hope this thing is clear now i'm just checking this shweta what she's trying to show in the error unexpected identifier index.html line number 12 just show your index.html also on line number 12 so mitesh is asking can defer make other things suffer to use just for one thing no 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 this this is just a uh, 
think think about uh, Nitish. Uh, it's it's like it's a one choice you have. I mean, somehow in your script you want to load some script lazy, some script eager. So if you want to load some script lazy, put defer. Some script eager, do not put defer. Right. So it's it's like it's a like a like a information for you. If you use a defer, you make it lazy thing. Without defer, it is eager thing. So it's depend on the business need. So if you want your HTML comes loaded first, then script will be loaded next because it's depend. Your script is dependent on your HTML. For example, you want to do some computation, A plus B you are going to do, or you are going to calculate some interest value, or you are going to sum up some uh, summary of a balance. So all these values suppose are coming from the some text boxes coming from the some buttons. If the text boxes are not there, buttons are not there, and script loaded first or run first, right? It it runs first. So the problem is the HTML things is, are not there. So it means your script is entirely dependent on the HTML stuff. That that mode of time you use differ. So it would not suffer anything, right? It is just a one 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 way for doing this. So Lakshya prompt is nothing because alert is basically used to show the alert dialog box, right? Which is somehow because I am just showing you guys uh, make focus on this. I I just use it just to identify the thing how the defer will work, right? I I hope Prapti I answer and I I hope I answer the alert answer of Diksha, right? What they are asking and therefore I I hope I answer because so many persons are asking the defer word. So I hope uh, Nitesh is also understand what is the benefit of this defer thing. Now Lakshay question is asking about the prompt. So uh, Lakshay, prompt or alert these are the pop up things that is actually used when when the JavaScript is invented when JavaScript is not uh, or the CSS is not mature because right now we are not using alert we are using some pop ups. So on Bootstrap there are some pop ups model windows we are using. So instant of alert so remember one thing why we use alert just to hold the screen so when i when i click on this then we we go back to the screen so through this we are able to simulate the defer problem right so we understand how the defer will work now the thing is if you use a prompt thing right if you use a prompt thing so i just go here and i go in this about blank section and go in this inspect section go to the console section like i told you alert and i am saying hello or i am just saying this kind of message your your record is added right so this is just an information message whenever you want to show the information message use alert right your record is added you log in successfully these kind of message but now these days people don't want to use this thing because people want to use the css3 or bootstrap for this right but it is provided by the JavaScript. So this is just to give an information message, right? So I hope Lakshya, this thing is clear. Now we are coming to the prompt. Prompt is basically to ask something. So if you if you want to ask something, enter your name, this kind of thing you want to access, right? So here I'm saying Amit. So it is prompted something. It takes some value. So this is the difference between alert and prompt. So prompt is prompting some value. Alert is basically displaying some messages, right? So now E has some result. Make sense? So this is the reason the prompt is. Hello. Yes. Yes. Hello. So this is Lakshya. Yeah. So I was saying that if we have a prompt, uh, prompt alert box. And we have to use that value in our HTML page. In an HTML page. Yes, sir. But yes, we can, our we can. HTML would be loaded first, and JS will be loaded later. So how can we do that? Because in the script tag tag we were using defer. Okay, you you want to take the value first of all, right? Yes, sir. And then you want to display it on an HTML. Yes, sir. Okay. But it, uh, but when the prompt will become, when you want to show the prompt. So prompt will come before that HTML page. It means on the screen load you want. Yes, sir. Like at the time uh, of loading. 
just at the time of loading we will first get the whatever value we, we enter and then we will display the page but here in script we were using defer so html was loading first of course html will load first because any because your question has making a cycle right it's like uh, murgi and anda wala cycle so this come first or this come first that is the problem so either we need to uh, load js or either we need to load uh, html first so in yes. in your case my solution is first load the html but make the tag empty right for example you have p tag right and you have let's say i will say p1 right so this p tag will be loaded but it would not be display makes sense it is loaded but it would not be display and then then your defer will uh, run and then it will pick the id of p1 and put the value makes sense okay yes okay. makes sense so you can do in this way okay sir mm, okay now now no, i am moving to the next question i hope deepam i answer your question you understand the lazy and eager thing because i already told this thing okay 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 i'm showing the js code i hope can we have multiple alerts or a single <laughs> definitely sagar we can have but uh, frankly speaking uh, if if you visit so many website no one right now these days using alert so it, because uh, css3 and bootstrap has the ability to create this model windows and model windows are are in the current scenarios right so th that's why just to understand this feature i use the alert and prompt kind of things nothing special for this makes sense guys i i hope uh, we understand because we what we started that's important we started something we, we we don't want to use this button id like we have the button id and we have this button id b2 and we don't want to use this on click stuff we don't want to mix the code and html together that's why we use this button id thing i hope guys this makes sense and that's why we understand we we isolated the code that's why we put everything document dot query selector here but when you put this thing we are able to learn a new feature that is called defer that comes in the picture because earlier the the js part will be loaded first and then the html loaded and it will generate an error that's why we make it this script lazy that is the whole soul learning on this right now the pointer is um, now the pointer what we uh, what is another choice for us is without defer without defer can we do it yes it is possible they have a predefined event that is that event is called so i just uh, committed out this alert thing i use a word called window you know window is a tab and there is a thing called add event listener and i put load there so it means i am saying on window load window dot add event listener there is thing called load right uh sen is saying no sound sound is there i mean my voice is coming i am audible okay right okay. yes sir okay so sen i think on your side there is some issue okay so window dot add event listener is there and there is an event called load if you if you inspired from this click is there and click has this say welcome right so load is there so it means this thing is called when this when the when your window is get loaded so it is again a flavor of lazy so if somebody asks how you can make the script things are lazy so you have one choice called defer you use a defer word or either you use this thing that is window dot add event listener load i hope guys this thing is clear and during the load during the load i want to load this thing this code right this portion of code so what i will do i will write this code in a special function and i just named it bind event i just named it bind event because this function is also responsible to bind the event so i just copy this stuff and cut it from here and i paste it here makes sense and on load i will say call the bind events so now it is much much clear it means when the index.html is there it read the script tag 
read the script tag go to the logic.js logic.js line number 1 says i will not run anything once the window is get loaded once the window is get loaded then i call bind events if then if bind event is called then the b1 button is present then i fetch the b1 and i attach the event i hope guys this thing is clear for everyone so this is a, another choice right that's why i am just opening the choice it means what sort of things you can do make sense guys so you have this window dot add event listener or you have window dot on load right i don't want to go to on load feature because it is more close to html style right i want to go on more on uh, javascript style that's why i use add event listener add event listener is a function and it has two arguments one is the event name and another is the bind events right bind events is, is my function make sense so the point is uh, the point is uh, akanshi is asking something repeat that fetching process uh, you you are asking akanshi this one window dot add event listener thing or something else okay so akanshi i am just showing window is a tab you know add event listener is same like button because i'm i want to use the same convention we use earlier we use this add event listener earlier for with a button same convention i follow with a window so it means earlier we attach an event with button now we attach a event with a window it means with a tab and we are saying when the tab is loaded tab loaded means once the html stuff is get loaded once the html stuff is get loaded then call the bind events so it is a, another mimic mimic of doing the uh we can say we are doing the same stuff which which we have done with a defer but without defer we are doing it so it means when the index.html is running it is on line number 13 on the line number 13 it is calling the logic.js logic.js says when the window is completely loaded i mean the html is completely loaded then invoke the bind events then invoke the bind events then attach this event right so that moment of time you have the event i hope this is clear so abhishek is asking is there any difference between window dot on load it is quite same but window dot on load is i need to remember the special syntax is always because it's attached with the window right so add event listener is more close to like button so instead of remembering so many different different syntaxes i follow the same syntax for attaching an event so if somebody asks you how to attach an event you have an answer add event listener how to attach with the window add event listener how to attach with the button add event listener right that's why i'm using the syntax right and it is more uh, clear syntax because when you use window dot on load and then equals to and then some function binding instead of this we have add event listener which has two parameter event name and what function you want to call i hope guys this thing is clear to everyone so this is what we have done till now we are saying our html is now cleaner it does not have any polluted code not mixing of html and C html i mean not html mixing with the javascript javascript is completely isolated it has the isolation right so that that is what we have done now the same stuff i need to do it with copy it paste it with a b2 and in the b2 i need to do uh, the thing called clear all makes sense the same stuff will work now the best part of this this kind of code is because you are all events are binded in a same function for example you have you have 50 buttons in a one screen so 50 buttons in a one screen how is it possible is it really yes of course so if if we are going to create this kind of calculator and this calculator suppose this calculator is scientific or this calculator is also programmatic so we want to give three options so we have plenty of buttons and suppose if you create this kind of calculator with an html and you are writing on click on click on click on click function 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 and somebody says change the function name so you need to search on which on click i done this but now you are in a code at least you know this is a function who is also responsible to do attaching with an event so this is the area where i will change it if somebody says change the logic of upper case or lower case or uh, init cap i know here i can change it change the logic of picking the text box values might be the text box name is get change so this is the place where i can change it okay so bhumika is saying my live server is not working bhumika i need to check after the class 
because otherwise uh, we are out of the flow. So uh, after four o'clock, you you can show me uh, why your server is not working, right? Meanwhile, you can install. There is there is a thing called light server. So there is a live server. There is a light server, right? Probably the more chances are the because of some firewall or some proxy, some restriction is going on. That's why the live server is not working. All right, so here we are, and so far we have done this thing. Any question, guys, in this in this code? Any query? Any questions? No. All right. So my perspective is you understand each and every line. I mean, because. As a good coder, you know why I am writing, why I done everything you know, right? So when you know the reason why I write this thing, what is the need of this? Then you will able to write the bigger codes also because it, it is just a start. Diksha is asking, can you please run and show with function bind events? OK, sure. So just go to the index.html and open with live server. And now from here, you just put like this and click on the greet. This is coming. When you click on a clear, this is get clear. Right. So the point is, when the windows get loaded, the bind event is there. It registered events, right? So it is doing the same stuff which we did here by using on click. Make sense? So Nift is asking, uh, is JavaScript the default language for the scripting in HTML? Yes, it's a monopoly of the JavaScript. Like I told you, Microsoft build VB script fail, J script fail. So now it's only monopoly. For the browser, the only monoplay is the JavaScript. So if you want to see the power of the JavaScript, just I, I have another browser, Chrome Canary, because I just use it just for learning the new things, right? It, because I told you whenever the new things is coming up, it is always on the Canary, right? So Canary is actually for the developer, right? And other browsers like uh, Chrome and rest of the stuff I will use for uh, browsing purposes, right? Okay, somebody mic is on. Oh okay, so uh, I just want to show you uh, why the JavaScript is required and everybody is using JavaScript. Guys, somebody mic is on. Please off. So, uh, so from here, if I just go to the browser and there is an option called settings, right? And in this setting, if you just type JavaScript, so you will understand because Nift is asking, is this the default language? Because if you just go here, uh, there is something called site setting, right? And you just scroll down here and there is option called JavaScript. By default, it is allowed. I just click it and it is saying recommended. It is allowed, must be recommended. I just close it. I just block this thing. Now you will see the behavior. I'm just open a Google, right? So Google is open. Now from here, I want to search something. Let's say I want to search BMW car. So it is no hinting is coming. You will see because Google by default giving hints. Now it is hinting is gone because this hinting is coming through the JavaScript. Makes sense. So if I try to open a Gmail, Gmail, when I click on this Gmail, it will directly says JavaScript must be enabled, then the Gmail will work. If I try to open a Flipkart, so if I go to the flipkart.com, so Flipkart would not load this sliders, right? Sliders are get failed. Most of the animations get failed. Images are not loaded. I hope you understand the power of the JavaScript. I show you some bigger website, right? And most of the bigger websites are get stopped if you disable the JavaScript. Make sense? Because everything is through the JavaScript. Keshav is saying hinting is done via Ajax, I guess. It means Ajax is, Keshav is entirely dependent on the JavaScript because it's a part of the JavaScript. Right. So everything is coming through a JavaScript. It means Ajax, when we talk about Ajax, Ajax full form is 
asynchronous JavaScript and XML, right? So it is a part of, it means Ajax is a part of the JavaScript stuff. Makes sense, guys? So that is the power. It means you have only on only one choice. So once you enable this, so if I enable this stuff, I enable this JavaScript, right? So this is the setting in every browser. So now if I just refresh it, it is get enabled. Now I'm doing B, I'm doing BMW car now, right? So this choice is coming. If I just go to Gmail stuff, so Gmail is coming up, right? So Gmail is get open. Make sense? If I go to this Flipkart section, I refresh it. Flipkart will be get loaded. Make sense? So this is the pop-up window which I am talking about. So now these these time people are using this pop-up window in, instead of this alert and prompt kind of stuff. I hope guys, this thing is clear to everyone. Now I am picking the questions one by one. Uh, so please explain window dot listener. I think this thing is clear. Window dot listener is responsible to uh, load this event, and during the load, it is calling bind events. I think I already answered this thing. Still, if you have questions, so you can ping it again. Can you please explain that JS code? Okay, what what you want to ask, Pranka? Bind event is specially for event binding, and it is attached when the windows get loaded. And whenever you click on a button, it is going to call say welcome. Say welcome is the older code. It is just picking the first name and last name. I mean, it is picking from the both of the two text boxes. Do the first letter capital, whatever the result are coming, we just concat it in a message and then print it. That's it, right? So any any specific part, if you have confusion, so please point out that part. Keshav, I hope you understand. Hinting is done. We are Ajax. Ajax is basically primarily dependent on the JavaScript stuff. Any other issues, guys? How to enable JavaScript in client side if it is disabled by coding? <laughs> no, no chance, right? So if you if somebody disable it, you cannot enable it, right? So you can just just give a message. Your JavaScript is disabled. Makes sense. So uh, what is in the bind function? Bind function is basically just to bind the events, right? So in the in this, you are just picking up the first button. So if there is a confusion in this so the best way out to see this is just do right click inspect console right so go here and just type document dot query selector and then specify hash and then b1 make sense so when you do this b1 so i hope you understand this b1 is actually pointing to the greet so i just put it where b1 so when i print b1 you will see i am on this button so this button is there and on this button i want to attach an event then there is a thing called add event listener and it is asking for the event name click and on click what i want to do right so what i want to do i will specify the function like i have the function called uh, the function i have used in my code that is on click call say welcome so it means when you click it say welcome will be called and this say welcome logic will be run i hope you understand uh, the add event listener Fundamental. I mean, how the bind is working. Deepika. Now, now, how to check? Uh, okay, Bharatwaj is asking how to check. This is always check on the server side because client side is disabled, right? So client side is not working. So on a server side, you you can check. How you can check it? The answer is uh, whenever you send a request to a server, server sends some headers. Inside headers, you can check. It has a JavaScript enable or disable, right? So uh, when we are doing the Node.js stuff, we have we can pick the client side headers, and through client side header, we can find it out this JavaScript is disable or not, right? So Pranav is asking other function except bind events loaded before HTML. Pranav, actually all the functions are loaded in the memory but not called. That's that is the point, because when you are on index dot HTML, it is actually loaded this file. So file is loaded, but execution is not happened. So execution is only happened when the load is happened. When the when the DOM, I mean the when DOM or we can say HTML is get loaded, then the bind events will work. Right. This thing is clear. Pringa, what what you have not understand? Can, can you just tell me? Is this this line is clear documented query sector? Because uh, you, you because it's a, just a one line code 
if you just check it out document dot query sector hash b1 is simply reading a button right and its name says you are attaching an event so you are attaching an event click it means on a button you attach an event right so you are actually doing document dot query selector hash b1 when you do this you are actually reading a button at the end right you actually reach to the button so b1 is id b1 is id right this is an id so you are reading an id so you have two choices to read an id either get element by id or by hash b1 so you are reading a button by by i, I will write by id because hash means so you need to remember hash means id right and add event listener when you are using a word called add event listener it is in call add event listener it means attaching an event right attaching an event and add event listener need event name and function name to be call that's it this is the syntax any other question guys uh, vikas is asking how will it show which window to be triggered if there are multiple windows triggered to the same javascript which window means tab why you find it window not add event listener to the load function right but button uh, sir aapne jo window ye add event listener ye jo first line likhi hai right ये विंडो कैसे सिलेक्ट हो रही है मतलब अपने आप ही सिलेक्ट हो रही है ना इससे जैसे आपने एक एच टी एम एल पेज पे आपने जाओ स्क्रिप्ट की वो दे दी सोर्स <laughs> अगर मान लो कि यही सेम सोर्स जो है वो बाकी एच टी एम एल पेजेस पे भी है ठीक है तो okay. कौन सी विंडो पे ये लोड हो रही है वो उस वाले केस में डू नो द कंसेप्ट कॉल्ड दिस दिस मीन्स ऑलवेज पॉइंटिंग टू द करेंट when we are in our school we learn this this is right so this means it is uh, we have right so we what, where we are right now we are on this current window so current window is of this remember this thing current window is this this is what this is window <laughs> that is important so current window this this is what this is window so it means this equal to equal to window is true make sense this equals to equal, equals to window so it means whenever we are talking about the current window current window is this make sense and this is what this is window right so it means if you are on a different window you have different this make sense you have different this that is pointing to the current window so window object represent the current tab this is the statement you need to remember window object represent the current tab so if you have five tabs you have five window objects make sense is i answer your question Uh, not what do you want to ask sir yahi thi us kare matlab agar 3 4 html pages hain aur us pe humne ye same script lagayi hai aur usme aapne window dot load kiya hai that the, the point is if you have different html files but still you have one window remember this thing chalo is aise dekhte hain just go to this tab you just go no, instead of going to the tab i just go to new window then you will understand you have this right now i am moving to something called amazon so tell me this is a first html page or not it is a first html page now i am searching here now where i am on the same page makes sense yes. right so it means the second page loaded where on the same window so window is same for because the tab is same makes sense tab is same for two html pages so i will click on readme note hmm. then it will open a new window na when then yes, it open new window that's my question that's right. so that what i answered if you open a new window there would be a new this like it is creating a two objects you have two objects one is this and it has one different is. different ids and different functions associated right 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 because this so will want it to error but so this is a different window this is a different window both are yes, object of window class but there are two objects make sense right is this clear both are of window object 
but is of different nature makes sense so both have their own this it has their own this it has their own this that way that what i communicated is this clear now yes sir it's clear now might be i i just i just uh, i just increase your question might be there are some question in your mind uh, can i share the data between two windows right can i share the data between two windows for example if i click on this this data will be handed over to this yes it is possible so there are two options either you you, you connect with some server it means whenever you click on something you will see there is some loading bar is moving on so it means if i click on it you will see there is some loading is going on so it means it is fetching the data from the server so it make a request to the server server will give a response makes sense server will give a response that's the first thing right so it means if you want to share the data between two pages the an absolute answer is put a server in between right that's a one thing and there is another answer that is every every domain like amazon.in is a one domain so it has something called there is a thing called local storage somebody also answer jatin is answer so local storage is there so local storage is a temporary storage in your machine it means it is on your hard drive and it will be not gone until you clear it it means if you shut down your system still it is there so local storage object is there and local storage like it is showing you amazon maintain some local storage right so amazon maintain some data on my machine right and it's it consume around 10 mb of data for one uh, domain makes sense so flipkart has 10 mb amazon has 10 mb makes sense so local storage can be shared so if you just see this is the local storage and if i am on a next tab because i am on the same domain so i just do inspect and go to the console section and from here i will write local storage you you are able to see the data is here so for example here in local storage dot name i am saying amit right and from here if i go here and i am saying local storage dot name so it will show amit right so data is exchanged between these two so local storage is a object which is provided by the html5 it is provided by the html5 but the problem is you cannot share credit card number here right password here because now end user can do right click inspect like you know javascript so you can do right click inspect and you can find out what is in the local storage so if the data is secure store it on the server side makes sense so this is the way out to exchange the data between two pages uh, either use a common server in between or either use a local storage there is another storage it is called session storage so local storage and session storage session storage is basically when the browser instance is open storage is there when the browser instance is but is, is closed then uh, session storage is gone so the local storage and session storage they have provided by the html5 right html5 introduced these two objects makes sense guys so you can you can think like so i will take care of your question yash also the so you can think like they have created javascript created something called dom they have created something called dom that is called i told you that is called document object model so they have created this thing right or you, we can say this this model we can manipulate this model so that's why i use some time word called manipulate we can manipulate manipulate means we can manipulate the objects so why i'm saying the word called model because it's a structure and the structure says it has on top level it has something called window it has something called window right and uh, this window if i just go down here inside this window there is something called document so on top level so there is window object which represent a tab document represent a your page section document can have buttons you know we have access it can have text fields it can have labels so many things it can have it can have h1 it can have p tag so so many things we can access it and to access all of these stuff we have answer call get element i'm using get element by id or 
query selector kind of stuff. These kind of stuff is there to access it. Make sense? Now the point is, we have the document. Same thing. We have something called local storage. So local storage is a child object of a window, right? So local storage is basically to store data on client disk. So it means we want to store the data on a client disk. So it, it must be non-secure data, right? That's why you want to store it here. And it is 10 MB for per domain, right? And it will store it on your hard disk. So it would not, it would not be gone. It is provided by HTML5. So HTML5 introduced this object. There is another object called session storage. So they have pro provide another object called session storage. And why it is used a word called model? Because it's a structure, right? So in session storage, it will it is store, store till browser instance is open. Right. So store till browser instance is open. Once the browser instance is closed, session storage is gone. Makes sense. It is also provided by HTML5. I hope guys this thing is clear. So the point is, uh, guys, somebody mic is on. Please switch off your mic. So somebody asks uh, local storage. We can share data between two. Get Jatin is replying that thing. Uh, I hope yes, you have cleared this thing. What is the local storage to store the data on a client side temporarily, right? Pranav is asking the same thing. It is for the client side. Karan is asking the difference between local storage and cookies. Cookies is the older style, and cookies is somehow is also live in in old browser. I hope uh, cookies can store two to four bytes of information, not more than this, right? But despite of this, it is going to store 10 MB of st storage, right? So local storage is just to store huge volume of data, right? 10 MB is huge to store the JSON thing. So uh, Nippon is asking uh, how we can clear local storage. Local storage dot clear. This is a function. So if you want to clear it, local storage dot clear is there. Repeat. Session storage, session storage. I told you, session storage is basically to store the data temporary till your browser instance is open. Once the browser is closed, session storage is gone. Local storage would not gone until you clear it. So to clear the local storage stuff, local storage dot clear is a predefined function to clear the thing. So if we just go here and you want to delete this thing, so local storage dot clear. This is the function. Now it is clear. Just check it out. It is now empty. Makes sense. So through this way, you can clear it. That's why I'm saying uh, do not store some important information. Otherwise, client can clear it. So you need to write some check. If this local story is clear, then borrow the data from the server. I hope guys, I answer your question. Bharatwa is asking session for user ID. No. Session storage is basically to store some, some information which is not required on the server side, but it is specifically when the user is get logged in. When the user is get logged out, that information is gone. So you, you can think like some information of user which is not secure enough. For example, you, you can think about uh, if you heard about the thing called session IDs or token IDs, that information you can store it, that use it for the communication purpose. Right. So Single is asking clear delete all data in local storage. Yes, it delete all the data. What about tokens? Tokens you can store in local storage or either in session storage. It's all up to you. Right. Make sense. I will push this chart also, right? I will push this uh, thing also on a get. I hope guys this thing is clear to everyone. I, I hope everyone understand. If you want to delete particular no issues, it is also possible. For example, you have think about you want to add particular. So you add a myth here. Now you want to remove it. So you write delete local storage dot name. Now it is deleted. Make sense. Right, so you, you can check it out. Now Paras is asking if we clear data from no percentage, 10 percentage, it is actually to clear the cookies, not the local storage, right? So Paras, it will clear only cookies. 
what shortcut key you were using for commenting in HTML, it is uh, control slash, the slash which is on, with question mark, right, on the same key. And uh, Yash is asking, is the local storage shared between sites or every site created? No, no, no. It is basically for per domain. So Amazon is a domain. So Amazon pages can share it, but Amazon Flipkart data cannot exchange. Right? So it is per domain. Remember this thing. So it is domain specific. That's why 10 MB for per domain. I hope, guys, I answer your question. If any question is left, so please raise your questions. Right, so I am moving. Uh, I am moving to the this chart, which which we are actually learning. So I am just closing out this this section, and uh, I hope we understand this funda window funda and the local storage funda session storage funda, and it is provided by HTML5. And this chart is actually very very big. We just started this thing. So we have window, we have the document, we have HTML5 thing, local storage, session storage. They have created a lot of lot of stuff inside it. They have created something called, I just go down, navigator object. So there is another object called navigator they have created. Its name says navigator. So navigator means it gives the browser information. So if you, if you are looking for some browser information, so you need to write window because windows are top level and dot navigator and you already know windows optional so it it means i i am not able if i am not writing window it's it is there it is there right navigator dot and if i write app code name so it will say this is a mozilla if i am saying this is th something called app version so it will detail out my system it will it it knows i am using mac it knows I'm using Intel machine. It knows which version of Chrome I'm using. So these kind of information, I will get it from this app version. So if I go to navigator dot and there is a something called like Bluetooth enable or not, or either I want to check is it is cookie enabled. I mean the cookies enabled on my machine or not. So some site saying your cookies are disabled. This website would not work. They will check it by using this. Some some website says your browser is outdated, so they they can check it by this navigator dot app version. So this is just a just an overview right now of navigator. Navigator has a lot a lot of stuff, and it is ideally when you are uh, when you want to create some application which has some GPS access. So if you just go here, navigator dot something called geolocation, right? So HTML5 introduced this thing that is called geolocation, that is to detect the GPS location, right? They have uh, another thing that is called um, media. So you, you can pick this uh, get user media through get user media. You can access webcam, these kind of stuff. So it, it means navigator is it is much bigger object which which can give you browser information, which can access browser hardware, right? Browser hardware means GPS or either the mic information, right? But I'm not going on this detail right now because otherwise we will divert it because right now we are on the JavaScript side, but I am just telling you what JavaScript object they have provided. So th this is the navigator object, right? And through navigator, you can also detect what is the language is set in my machine. That is English GB is a Great Britain, right? So it has all these information inside the navigator. I hope guys, this makes sense. Everyone understand this thing. This is the navigator object. Now they have something called navigator dot um, they have something called navigator dot um, history or not uh, navigator sorry window dot history so windows option so i will directly write history right so there is an object called history but i am not going to use it here because otherwise these logs whatever i have written will be gone so what i will do i just copy this stuff and paste it here uh, so we will remember this syntax right so i just paste it here and uh, and I just move it. Uh, I move from this section and then I will copy paste this stuff for you. So from here, if I write the thing called history and history dot back, if I use so it will it will actually put me on a previous page. So if I do history dot back, you will see I'm on the previous page, right? If I do history dot forward. So I, it, it would be forwarded, right? So this is how you can do the back and forward stuff. And it has important method called history.go. So if you write history.go minus two, so it will 
re, it will reach you two page back but if you use positive two so it it means forward two page so minus two back two page right current page is zero previous page is minus one and next previous is minus two right and forward for one and then two or and so on right so there is a another method that is called go i for in history so it means they have provided a predefined object so they have provided a lot of objects one is history right and through history you can do go you can do back you can do forward so you can get the history information right through navigator you get the language information of a browser you can specify the cookie information of a browser you can guess, get the gps information of the browser you can get the webcam information that is provided by the html file right for the hardware call purpose so there are plenty of things they have provided i hope guys you understand this point what sort of objects they have provided that's why the dom is so much thing it, it means they have provided a lot of lot of objects now they have provided something called screen so if you want to get the screen resolution so this is also possible so if if i write window dot screen it is also correct right so if i use screen and screen has something called uh if i use screen dot so instead of this i will use this screen because it is not giving me a hint so screen has the thing called width what is the width of your screen right now so it, it is suggesting me the width, width it is suggesting me the color depth so i if i am using screen dot width so it is suggesting me the width screen dot height so through this you can identify the screen height screen width i mean you can identify in which device your application is running you can identify the screen color resolutions even so this is the color depth option right so th there are a lot of options pixel depth you can get it so these all options it is provided here make sense so this is the screen object now prapti is asking history.go prapti if you use history.go minus 1 so it means you are on a back page i mean you are on a back by one page if you use minus 2 you are back with a two pages right so when when you are visiting a website it is like it making a stack behind the scene and this is a right implementation of stack in practically so it means when you are on a first page when you click on some link so it means you are on a second page so behind the scene the first page in a stack and second page on top of it then you are on uh, you click on the third page so the third page is here second page is here first page is here so now you are here for example and you do history dot go you do history dot go minus 2 right so you are here so it is zero so minus 2 means you are actually reached to two page behind so you are on this first page right so for example you have two other pages and you are here so if you if you write history dot go and you are not specify minus 2 so it is become plus 2 so it will reach to the fifth page right so behind the scene when the pages get visited they create stack right and go method is used to go back or go forward right but back is if you use back only so back will back only one point right forward will forward only one point but when you use go so you, you have an option either you reach to the fifth page or either you reach to the last page right makes sense yes is asking if you use target blank how will history work N never work right so that's why i'm not working on about blank so about blank does not maintain any history but when you create a website then it maintain the history right because you have a website you have pages then the history is there but when you do not have the pages there is no history i hope this is clear yes i hope prapti the go is clear so now the point is we understand the screen object as well as so there is a uh, another thing we have covered here that is this thing is called the screen so we have covered an, another object called screen and through this you can identify screen width screen height right and screen color color depth so these kind of option you will get through a screen so that's why the dom is very very big thing they provided a lot of stuff inside it right so if we just go back here and if we tested out this thing i i'm even i'm just copying all this stuff 
in a one place. So when I share this everything with all of you, right? So it is giving because I just copy paste everything. That's why it is giving curly bracket error. Now I, I just go here and I'm saying there is another thing that is called location. So there is an, another object called location, right? So location dot href. If you use location dot href, so it will give you the current location. You are on this location, right? So if you want to do location, location dot, and you are saying href, and if you suggested href equals to some website, let's say https www dot google dot com. Suppose this is the code, right? So I, before running this code, because it will open a new page. So I just copy this stuff and paste it again here. So I will share the code with you for your practice purpose. So if I press enter here, it will open a new page. Make sense? So this is the use of the location. So if you want to redirect to some page and if you want to identify the current page, you have the predefined object called location. Make sense? So I hope this thing is also clear location. And we understand we can identify href, we can identify the current host as well as, I, I mean, where we are. Which is asking how to get screen access. It means you want to control somebody's screen, is it? Is this Vijay you're asking? So for, for, for this thing, Vijay, uh, again, the answer is you need to uh, go for some third party library. JavaScript not provide you direct access of this. So you need some third party libraries, which is again written on some top of C and C++ stuff because a lot of permission is required to access the screens, right? A lot of operating system permissions. So JavaScript not create any screen access function, right? They, they are suggesting just use some third party APIs to access the screens, right? So when we start this node stuff, so we will learn something called npmjs. When we are on this npmjs.com, we are able to see there are plenty of plenty of things. So I just go and sign in. Uh, I will try some some I, I just try here. I think in this mesh in this browser I am login with npm. So I just sign in. So then you 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 have the understanding of it. So it is showing there are this 13 lakh packages they have for IoT, for backend, for front end for CLI, for mathematics, for robotics, so, so so many things. And people are last week downloaded this and last month downloaded this. So it is quite popular place. So we'll use this npmjs when we start this node. So we will able to use so many packages. I mean, so many third party libraries. But this this moment of time, I am mostly focused on the JavaScript side because I want to uh, bring what JavaScript is providing, right? That's why we are our focus right now in, on this. I hope you understand. So uh, Bharat was saying explain location. Location is basically used to uh, redirect to some location. So I'm using location.href, so it will give the current location. And if I use location.href and some location, so it will redirect me to some different location. So if you if you want to get the location information, so location has so many things like location has host name. So it will give you the host name is www.google.com. If you're looking for, let's say, what is the protocol I am using? So location dot protocol. So it will tell you you're using HTTPS. So it means all the information regarding your uh, in which page you are. So you can get the host name. You can get the protocol. You, you can redirect to different page. These kind of information is provided by the location. Right. So these are the predefined APIs they have created. I hope guys this thing is clear and the, these things are pretty much easy to use. So it means when you use location dot and plenty of functions are there, you need to just follow these functions, right? Like there's a function called reload. So the reload is a function. If I call this reload, so it will actually refresh the page. If you just see, for example, if I say BMW car, I am here and now from from this place, I am writing location dot reload. So it will refresh it. Make sense? So these plenty of functions are provided by whom? Provided by the DOM, right? 
and what we are learning right now we are learning the norm make sense guys i hope everyone understand this bigger diagram what they have provided right so it's a, just a start of journey right that's why javascript is a unlimited thing it has i hope everyone understand these things now now the next stuff which uh, which we are which we want to move that is uh, because anyhow we are going to use uh, most of the dom things but uh, but the point is because we are we are on the mern stack and if you just google it react says zero dom so react don't like the dom javascript like the dom right so when we are on react js this dom is ended right it's completely vanish we will see why right so angular don't want to use the dom view don't want to use the dom right current say virtual dom yes virtual dom is a bigger bigger thing so i'm i don't want to use these kind of stuff bunty is asking what is dom <laughs> bunty from last half an hour we are learning this dom right <laughs> if you are in the in the class so dom is document object model and what are the objects we are learning these are dom i hope you understand right so uh, these all predefined objects which is provided by the javascript to access everything that is the dom right okay so i hope you understand so dom is document object model which we used right all right now uh, i hope we everyone understand this thing so dom is only for the javascript stuff and on react side we are not going to use the dom now now i am moving to some some question part because i want you do some hands on it is very much needed for all of you so i am giving you two exercise i am planning for the two exercise you have to write the code but you must know every stuff right make sense so we you know i because i i am asking the code to all of you so whatever the code you are going to i mean i am giving some exercise you need to write the code and then i will tell you how you can upload on a github so uh, i will tell you how you can host your website on a github as well as right so i first assign some exercise to all of you you first understand the exercise do the brainstorming on it i mean some questions will become how we will do this stuff how it is possible we will discuss all of these stuff and then Uh, then you will create the i mean you will create the application what what uh, what whatever the application i am giving so two two exercises i mean two application mini applications i am suggesting today and that is based on this exercise i mean the greet app we have done so same way out you are going to use right bharat was is asking which api we use to correct the database from the mobile app integrated website so bharat was if you are connecting to a database with a mobile application so answer is there is no such api to connect to the database so it means your front end site never talk to the database never ever right so it means if you are your database if i am able to access your database through javascript or through a mobile app because mobile app and the javascript are the front end thing so your database never be access directly by the js never by the mobile app because both of them are are on the client side think about if you create any application in javascript which is able to access the college database right and you can change your semester marks right through javascript right so you you can able to access any database right so instead of accessing any database directly we we put some layer that layer is a server side layer right so we put server side layer and that server side layer is called web service if you heard about it or web api so through node js in this course through node js the end objective is to create this this kind of service and this kind of service is actually consumed by whom by the front end i hope bharat was you understand how the front end is talking to the database no direct talk it is always through, through the server side thing so server side we use express js that's why in this course express js we you are going to learn node js we are going to use right so js is talk to this react is talk to this right make sense guys
so Sat- satish is sharing something so satish is designed something right great app so you can even design it with a css or with bootstrap or with a css3 right now the core focus is only the code sunday is planned for designing stuff right good design satish so now we are uh, moving to this stuff what sort of exercise we are going to create okay uh, nirosh is asking can you explain more about api nirosh uh, to m- make it very very easy this stuff the api stuff just think about i just open a blank page here right a let, let's say and here i will just uh, create something api means application programming interface that's the first full form so api means which is predefined i mean for example you want to print something so you have the answer console.log right so that's a predefined api so it means there's a predefined object so this is an object and this is a function inside this object right and we are able to access it that's the first thing that's the first example of api second is you use document dot get element by id that's an api right there is somebody mic is on so document dot get element by id that is uh, this thing is basically again an api so these these api it means we have learned a lot of lot of apis like add event listener is an api inner text inner html these all are part of the api it means these are the predefined things now there, there is another api that is called web api web api means for example you want to get what is the today weather so there is a predefined web service on the internet so we will see how to consume it so suppose you want to uh, figure out cricket score right you want to figure out imdb rating of a movie right imdb rating of a movie so it means these all are the web apis because these informations are coming from the web you want to get the share market rate so that is again a web api i hope you understand uh, what exactly the meaning of an api nirosh why the api is needed satish is asking how to use enter key to focus next input field and when we at last name we press enter then greet is clicked no issues so uh, satish is asking how to press enter key so and he want uh, in in index.html he want i just clear it out this thing he want when i when i on this uh, second text box last thing right and i press enter then greet automatically clicked instead of clicking this right so what i need to do you need to remember there is an event called on key up right there is an event called on key up so we, you need to use on key up so key up says when you press enter the key is get up right so key down when you press it right and when you release it key up will become right so there is a function called key down and key up right so releasing is up so i want to execute it when the key is get released it means after pressing the enter so on key up i don't want to write it here because you know i don't want to make the html dirty that's why i just go here and you know the answer i need to just go here and type document document dot uh uh-huh. it is just uh, doing automatically this thing so document dot query selector and then i will say hash and and what is the name of the last field l name right so i am picking this l name dot add event listener right and here i specify something called key up so i just go here and type key up right and on the key up i will specify some function name right so i want uh, when i press enter it will be executes greet so i will say execute execute greet right let's say this is my function name so i just copy this name i just go here i am typing function execute greet i hope everyone understand what is the use of the key up now the point is when this key up is fire when the key up is fire it will give you, it it will give us 
some event i mean it will give give us some event so i just go here and i am typing some event so i will take some event console dot log event is comma event this is what i am typing right so i just go in this place and uh, i am running this one and i am typing something here and then here i am typing it so you will see event is some keyword event is coming up right so it is giving some keyword keyboard event i got it now the point is event is happen on some target target means it is happen on some text box so l name is what is a target makes sense so it is a target so event dot target will give it is happen where so when when i type it here so it is giving this target makes sense and from this target uh, i will i will fetch something because i need to remember the function name i think it will give something called uh, it is give something called what we called it some key key code something it is giving so i just need to google it i think some key code i need to use uh, i will say sky i think sky of enter is 13 i suppose sky of enter is 13 uh, sky of enter get in text box right so i think it is 13 somehow so 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 js i will write js i think so it is not it is something else so i will say if key s i is equals to equals to 13 makes sense if it is equals to equals to 13 so just call just call say welcome that's it makes sense so it will call say welcome it is all about fetching data api is, is uh, i i told you api is two things it has api says some predefined 
functions which is created by the JavaScript as well as web API. When we talk about the web API, then we are saying it is all about the fetching the data or sending some data, right? And so best best word is Neurosis. The best word is CRUD, right? That is create, read, update, delete. So these kind of operation you can done through API. How does an API work? We will see Node.js, Lakshay. That that is the best time to understand, right? How does the API work? Because if I tell you, that's a theoretical part. But when we did it in a Node.js time, then we will understand it. Bundy is asking, can we use web scrapping? Of course, because you have the DOM. You can do uh, the web scrapping, right? Karan is saying even dot. Yes, I use even dot key. So can you please show the code for the S key S guy? OK, sure. This is the code. So I get even dot key code. So it is giving whatever the event is happen, what what key is pressed. So whatever the key is pressed, it is coming up and I'm checking if it is 13. So call the say welcome. Is this clear guys? So uh, guys, now I am moving to, to the next stuff. We understand this basic one. Now there are two exercises I told you that is planned. So I am moving to the first exercise right now. I'm not able to see the chat window, so I will see your chat questions later on. But I'm first giving the first exercise. The first exercise you need to create that is a tic tac to game. Right, so in this tic tac to game, you need to create nine buttons. Right, so you need to create nine buttons and when I click on a f any button, the first button, let's say, will become cross. So next automatically comes zero. Again, if I click on this thing, so it's, it's still remain cross. It would not change, right? If I press zero here and I press, let's say, X here and I press zero, so this will be win. So it will show zero wins. So this is your first exercise, guys. So I want to, I want some discussion on it because everyone play this game, right? So I want some discussion. What would your approach? How you will create this kind of exercise, right? So we need to build this stuff. Make sense? Priyanshe is showing document dot on key down. Yes, of course you can. You can write this kind of code also. But we are on add event listener approach. That's why I follow the add event listener approach, right? Because otherwise you you people get confused. Sometimes I write on key down or sometimes I write add event listener. That's why we are on a one side, right? So guys, what is your approach to build this game? I mean, you, are you able to see the code? Are you able to see the code or uh, I mean, in, in your mind, are you able to see or uh, you are? I mean, it's a black box. I mean, how to build it, where to start it. That's why I'm discussing this thing. So that's the first exercise after the great app. Any answer, guys? Sandeep is saying use some random function put the picture. But why random? Mm. Triveni is asking the Triveni the exercise is basically the tic tac to game. I hope you played this game. So we need to place zero rex on some buttons. So we have nine buttons and when when we click on the button, so we need to place X or zero, right? So based on it, if the first pair will win, so it will show the X is win. Otherwise, zero is win. The my my important point is guys, when when you build this, the code must be very, very clean. It means it follow the SRP rule. It has some add event listers fundamental. So I, I, I want the code which whatever you will write, it is easy to understand by everyone, right? So you follow the, those conventions which is which we have written in the screen app, right? 
so this is the first exercise you need to build the second exercise is you need to build is that is this calculator app right so you need to build this calculator one right so ajay i am not suggesting to use jquery use javascript anyhow when you go to some any intro they they want to like you write javascript because in javascript you need to write everything because they have not provided a lot of features like jquery right that's why the recommendation is always write it through the javascript instead of jquery so now the point is uh, when you build this calculator so guys which thing is complex i mean the basic one is complex or you feel uh, the programmatic one is complex or either the scientific one is complex Abhishek is asking we have to make tic tac toe on javascript of course you need to make it on javascript so basic seems easy but actually basic is tough because if you are able to create a basic one you are able to create this one because if you just see the scientific it has sin theta cos theta and i told you there is a predefined function that is called math and math has predefined function math dot sin math dot cos math dot ten so it means you need to just call the functions and you will use it right which is also saying the same so it means when you are creating a basic one the scientific one is not a bigger deal so right so we need to focus on the basic one so we need to replicate it but what sort of replication i want i want the replication like this uh we just go here and uh, go here and say google calculator so our calculator would be like and instead of type google calculator i just type calculator is a correct word why it is not showing So try writing some math equation. It will come up. So otherwise, it will show something. The so calculator online. Mm -hmm. Then it will come. Ah, this one. This one I am looking for, which is which is actually built by the Google. So we try this thing. Uh, so you try this one also, and if you, if you just see the behavior of this, it is saying. Uh, i just clear 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 this thing first of all i'm saying uh, 55 plus 2 minus 3 into 5 and then i do equal then it will generate this output right so this kind of calculator so i am looking for on the base only the basic one if you are going to create the this scientific thing it is not a bigger deal because this feature you can create it by using math dot and when you use math dot you have list of functions so that's why the complex part is only this makes sense so try this one right and whatever the key you will press so you need to you need to ensure you are not breaking the principle you are not breaking the principle called srp in your code and i am also aligning one principle that is called dry dry means do not copy paste the codes it means for example in a first button you write some code on the second button you are pasting the same code on third button you are pasting the same code so you are breaking this principle dry dry means don't repeat yourself right so if the code is duplicate make it in a function and call that function right so follow the dry principle follow the srv principle then create this this thing right so you need to create this exercise right and we will live this exercise on a git make sense so whenever you go for some interview or some internship you can showcase this kind of application so this is just a basic one because if you just see we are on a, just a second day and we have the out, outcome so now we are able to build this kind of application right then after this we will move to some bigger one like how to build some shopping application how the search how the searching sorting stuff how to add to card how the view card is working so we will move to the third level right but that would be after the html and css stuff makes sense i hope guys this thing is clear to everyone any question so far any any problem you are facing any challenge you are facing to build it so abhishek is, is saying tic tac then we can use if else condition click event also in tic tac right right you can you can use this if else condition meanwhile 
right? Because you need to check either this player is win or not, or either if you don't want to use uh, more if else, so you can create a matrix behind the scene. So tic tac toe, if you just see, it is a matrix. So you maintain some matrix, and in matrix you know diagonal traversal, uh, row traversal, column traversal, so you can use it. Single is asking what is strict mode. Strict mode is just I told you when when we use a strict mode, so we cannot use global variables kind of stuff. So it has some rules and regulations. So you need to just put use strict. That's it. When you use use strict, and if accidentally you try to use some global variable, you break the global variable conventions, then it will generate the errors. So when you use use strict, my suggestion is use strict used on the initial day. of your code i mean for example if you join some company for internship and you you learn u strict is a very good thing it prevent the global variable and the people are working from let's say from years on that project let's say two years they are spend and they have not used strict and you just join the organization and you put u strict so plenty of errors will come so you use strict it compulsory when you are on a day one of your project otherwise never use it make sense so if you are starting your applications to so start with the use strict in between if you are using it so it will generate some errors make sense i hope single you understand what is the strict mode right so it's a rules set of rules and regulations like uh, one of the rule is prevention of global variable so this is the way out line number 3 you need to specify in a strict mode and this would be on the first line because this one that would be on the top on every js right so either use or either never use it's like this so is there any deadline to submit assignments i i believe guys you must enjoy the assignments right assignment is just to enjoy yourself so do not bound it yourself on deadlines right because if because i if i am in place of you because when i was a student and i any any uh, i attend some training and i learn something new so i immediately start opting it so i i will not wait it so it means start it from today onwards try to complete it within two days or three days of time not more than this so it means at least once you uh, complete this thing and you will uh, share share your assignment with others and others share the assignment with you then you can check and compare your codes with others so you 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 have a lot of learning so that's why i want uh, this team we all we create a account on a git on a next week and we host our all the applications like these two is, are the starting one but still what whatever the assignment we will learn we will put everything on a git and then we share all the links to each other right so we can see how they write the code Aisha is asking for clear we use zero or blank zero, of course, right? Uh, because zero is by default there, so you use put zero. I mean, uh, in calculator perspective, I am saying, right? If you want put string blank, so blank is there. But in calculator perspective, when you click on a clear button, zero must be there, right? How do you submit the assignments uh, in the next class? I mean. in the next class i will tell you how to host it in, on a git and after this you need to share your git urls right makes sense one for flip player nirosh is asking one for flip player you are asking i think nirosh you are saying a one player game of tic tac toe or two player game because two player is the easiest one right now i am giving you two player makes sense oh, one player if you are creating you need to write lot of intelligent stuff right ran is asking the calculator should be responsive no because i am not teach right now the responsive thing i am only looking for the javascript stuff responsive expectation is coming after the next week because after next week we understand the responsive stuff uh, nipun is asking difference between key up and down key up means you release the key key down means you press a key so it means if you want for example if you are try to build a game on a javascript so when you hold a key the player will run when you release the key the player will stop 
that moment of time you need a key up and key down right so when you do key up it means key is release right so when you do key down so it means key is pressed make sense okay so i hope guys uh, we are good enough to understand the things i am sharing this code and i am sharing uh, the console code uh, and i am also sharing the dom picture with all of you so uh, just walk through all of this stuff the next uh, sunday is plan for something called ajax call ajax call means we are going to consume uh, server stuff right so it means uh, we are going to do some kind of so like for example uh, we are going to do next week we are starting with something called ajax fundamental that is very very much important because we are going to use uh, for react so for example i want to access let's say cricket results so there is an api called crick api so if you want, if you want to access the cricket stuff so the crick api will be there and uh, if you want to access some weather news so there is something called weather api so we are going to consume these kind of apis make sense when will do css css is planned on the set i mean the uh, i think um, your saturday is the 15th 16th you have the class i mean the sunday and uh, on the sunday the first first two hours we start with ajax because according to the plan ajax is left ajax is uh, i mean on the uh, saturday so saturday is a holiday so i mean the sunday's time we are doing the ajax stuff first two hours with me and the next two hours with uh, with ravi sir who is providing the designing thing right so ajax is basically to talk to the apis so if you want to talk to the back end stuff then we use ajax right so two hours for the ajax stuff and then the two hours for the html stuff and then there would be a class on monday right so that is again for the designing so sunday second half the uh, the html css stuff and the monday is again the html css stuff i hope this thing is clear guys no confusion priyanka i already uploaded the morning session code now i am going to upload the this this code uh, rahul is saying no rahul we are, we need to create responsive means a different thing responsive means uh, responsive means uh, it will work on laptop or mobile or tablet it means it adjust according to the screen size response means you need to show the response right it is not only making the design calculator must be the functional make sense which is saying as you said accessing the screen we have to use cc++ done how we are going to merge so we are not going to merge which i am saying they create some library which is internally using cc++ and top of they have the javascript so any we are going to call the the javascript stuff like in node js node js entire bottom layer is a cc++ but we are not going to write any cc++ code we are going to talk to the javascript javascript internally going to talk to the cc++ stuff right so i am saying the library is which is using cc++ but on top of they have written this javascript so you you can think like your uh, java javascript like a sugar right and c++ is bitter so it is not having the sugar stuff that's why we put the javascript on top right so these are the library which is internally using it makes sense or uh, your question is basically to uh, correct to two language the answer is web api that makes sense so the trivago is one of the best answer if you if you watch the ad of the trivago trivago says um, there are a lot of hotel deals right and they are picking the data from the make my trip yatra so many websites right so they are actually communicating with different different websites might be make my trip is on a different website i mean might be on the php yatra might, might be on excuse listen, me sir right? uh, sorry to interrupt you students are leaving please tell them about the additional trainer to be mentioned on the whatsapp group before they leave okay so guys uh, one more thing i want to communicate uh, that is the additional trainer is exist on the whatsapp group so you can uh, you can uh, ask your queries on the weekday time on whatsapp group because there is a support trainer who will resolve your queries also right on a whatsapp group 
and there would be a retelecast of these sessions like the retelecast of the 8th august monday class would be done on 10th august at 5:30 for the 8th august uh, the yesterday session evening session it will be done on 11th august again at 5:30 and today's morning session will be repeated on 12th and today's evening session that is this session would be uh, repeated on 13th we want all of you all those students who have connectivity issues can again see those we want all of you to be live only your attendance which is in live classes will be counted and minimum 75% attendance is important to gain a certificate in this course on 15th august we have, sir has already mentioned it's independent state so it will be off we'll be having your next class on uh, 16th august that is sunday and monday 5:30 to 7:30 would be your regular class from sir itself ravi sir would be joining he is a specialist in designer and has already designed 56 websites and uh, he, uh, you'll be having fun of both things backside and front side now uh, you can have your doubt session and the rest of the students can leave if they have their doubts they can clear it right now thank you sir for the valuable uh, sessions thank you ma'am the information is very valuable for the students thank you ma'am so i am going going to share the code guys yes dipika 16 and 70 is the class ma'am can you also ping this information on whatsapp group also because might be some students can have some confusion yes sir yes sir i would like to uh, send the schedule again on the whatsapp group students who have doubt they can see the schedule on the website also it's very much clear that 15th we have kept in off because of independence day so we are having an additional class on 17th monday that is 5:30 to 7:30 in case you have doubts the message would be clear by mails on the website and also on the whatsapp group we are having a normal class next on 16th morning so you can continue yeah so guys meanwhile you can ask your doubts so i am just uploading the code first of all so i upload greet copy that is for the uh, afternoon session code and morning code is greet app right and this is the log file that is for the dom right and uh, i am also going to share i will share the picture also because i need to save it in a jpg there i will share So meanwhile, I am just taking the routes and I uploading this code. Yes, sir. 